ブランドスポンサーの提供でお送りします Hey guys, Kakarot197 again. This time with a review of the high grade Gundam Hajira Boshi from the Iron Blooded Orphans Order Hunt mobile game. And this model kit was provided to me by my favorite online hobby store, Hobby Link Japan. Links to buy your own Hajira Boshi down below. And the first thing that I noticed about this kit is that rather than the usual Gundam White, this thing is a lightish purple, which definitely makes it stand out amongst other Gundams. The second thing I noticed are these horrible hollow parts on the feet. I can accept them on more hidden places, but these are just in plain sight, detracting from an otherwise pretty good looking machine. The only seam lines are on the shoulders and the booster paws on his ass, and the stickers are mostly standard Iron Blooded Orphans fare. It's quite a big sheet with a sticker for each eye, two grey stickers on the head, two red stickers for his V fin, four on top of his shoulders, another four in the middle, and two for the front skirt armor. Then we get a black one for the crotch and two on those foot mounted thrusters. On the back then we get two yellow and two purple stickers, there's a nice metallic green one for the sensor of the gun, and finally we get a whopping four red stickers on top of the shield, one on the bottom, and then four black stickers. I thought I was building a 2020 Iron Blooded Orphans kit, not a 2002 Gundam Seed kit. Anyways, this all means that we still have to paint a bit of black here, there and a lot of black here. To finish up then, apply some light purple to the hollow parts. And this is probably a good time to mention that I also cut off those horribly thick V-fin flags that this kit had. Despite the negatives though, the Hajiro Boshi is still a nicely presentable and colorful model kit straight out of the box. Although it will greatly benefit from just a bit of extra love and care. On the inside then, it's mostly familiar territory. The inner frame is the Gundam frame number 4, with just the lower arms being new parts. This then means that it has that typical Iron Blooded Orphans articulation, in combination with a slightly weaker waist joint, but on the Hajira Boshi it's not that big of a problem because most of the stuff is mounted on the lower body. So let's get that yogurt colored armor back on and have a look at the accessories. First up, we get the 110mm short range rifle. And this thing literally couldn't be any simpler. It's two halves slapped together with that beautiful metallic green sticker that I mentioned earlier, and it fits into the hands absolutely perfectly. And in case you don't want to use it, you can simply store it onto the side skirts. Then for close range combat, first up we have the smart mace. I don't know what makes this thing smart, but it definitely looks really good on the Hajiro Boshi. And just like the rifle, it fits really good into either the left or right hand, and you can also store it onto the side skirt armor. And then finally we get the crab shield. Other than its quite disappointing color separation, it does have some cool moving parts. Like those yellow claws and that extending rod. Attaching it to either arm is super simple, you simply peg it in there, and then to rotate it around, the peg on the arm itself rotates, which is a pretty cool alternative to those usual connector pieces that we get. And then finally we also get a few leftover junk parts, the lower arms of the Gundam frame number 4. And now it's time to have a quick look at the articulation of this thing. The head is on a double ball joint, so it goes nicely up, down, left, right, and a bit forwards and backwards. The shoulders then are on the usual hinge and ball joint combo, so it does have some pretty good movement on just that ball joint, and be a bit careful because that does still like to pop out. It goes upwards nicely and a little bit extra with that hinge. The arms will then go upwards about that far. This thing will go up and down. The arms will rotate around below the shoulder, bent at the elbow on only a single joint, but still get pretty good articulation out of that. Then the hands are as always on ball joints, will wiggle around, turn around and do everything a ball joint does. 
just as the lower waist it's on a ball joint with some serious wiggle until it inevitably pops out. Then the waist itself has a hinge for some good forwards movement and backwards movement. Just be careful to not wear out that joint. Then on the back we have these giant booster pods that will go up and down nicely and will also rotate around. The front skirts then are on ball joints, they're molded together but as always can be separated. The legs go forwards about that far, backwards not quite as far due to that static back skirt. And since there's almost no side skirts to speak of, they go out really far. They will also go forwards and backwards on that extra hip joint and down here we can also see the action base connector. The legs will rotate around and bend at the knee on two joints for as far as they can go because they are quite bulky with that extra thruster there. Then the feet are again the usual iron blooded orphan style. Forwards and backwards a little bit on a ball joint but the sideways movement is quite literally second to none. If your foot does that, consult a doctor immediately. Then the ankle guard that's connected to the foot itself will go up and down. This booster pod is on a ball joint, will wiggle around, turn around and do everything a ball joint does. And then finally we also have a toe joint. So I believe it's enough to say that whatever pose you want your Hajiroboshi to pull off, he'll pull it off. Heck, if you go to my Instagram, you can even see this thing transformed. So as always, the inevitable question is, do you want to buy this? And all things considered, this thing ends up being kinda meh. Now don't get me wrong, for anyone who wants a Hajiroboshi, go for it. It's basically the average Iron-Blooded Orphans kit. It's really nicely articulated, it looks pretty good as a straight build and comes with all of the accessories you would want. The problem then is the price and the fact that this is an Iron Blooded Orphans kit. Typically they are about 1000 yen for the standard ones like the Barbatos and 1200 won for the more elaborate ones like the Gushin Rebake. At 1500 yen this is one of the most expensive Iron Blooded Orphan skits out there for no real reason. As a result, then, almost every other one is going to be a better deal and makes it kind of difficult to really recommend this thing. For some more comparisons, then, here he is next to the 1000 yen Gray's Custom holding a gun from a 600 yen weapon set and the 1200 yen Gray's Ritter. Again, much better deals. And then finally, here he is next to the standard size Jim Custom and the always bulky Zaku 3. And that's all for this review brought to you by Hobbling Japan. If you want to buy the Hajiroboshi or any of the other Iron-Blooded Orphans kits, links are in the description down below. And as always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope all of you watching have a great day and I'll see you all next time.